up everybody, this is Maniac4Bricks, and welcome back to Brick Theory. Bionicle Generation 2 was intriguing for some, and underwhelming for others. But in this video, let's skip most of the debates, and jump to one of the most underwhelming characters of the short-lived reboot, the Lord of Skull Spiders. Aside from being a $15 price point set, and lacking a functional play feature, this figure was hardly a threat to the Toa before they reached the ancient city to revive Akimu. Or at least the animations made it seem that way. Not much story as well as intimidation by design made this and the Skull Spiders a forgettable wave of enemies. But as we know, with Bionicle's cancellation, many other plot points were left unanswered and lacking major importance. But what if I told you that this Lord of Skull Spiders was a dangerous foe to the villagers of Okoto before and during the Toa's arrival? Before I spin a web of theory your way, let's take a look at some comparisons between the Skull Spiders, the Lord of Skull Spiders, and the Golden Mask that seems to control the Skull Spiders. It's only fair to look at Generation 1's foes and previous LEGO sets and masks, since many other aspects of Generation 2 were inspired and recreated from Generation 1. 2015 and 2016 of Bionicle was a reboot which uses concepts from an earlier work and modifies how they're expressed and applied to make the retelling of the same story. And with that, let's learn more about the Lord of Skull Spiders, or as I'll call them for this video, Loss, based on its abbreviation. We'll also abbreviate Generations 1 and 2 as G1 and G2, respectively. The first thing to note is that the Skull Spiders share the same body design as the Golden Mask that controls them. As we've seen with other masks in Generation 2, Golden Masks signify abilities for the user, and while most are worn, Lost doesn't wear the Skull Spider mask. As a result, the mask doesn't transform his body like it does for the Toa, Akimu, Kolta, Umarak, and Makuta. That's why Lost doesn't resemble the Soul Spiders, because his rule over them is only dictated by the mask's power. The golden color of this mask also proves that Skull Slicer, from the second generation 2 wave, has a mask with no Skull Spider power, and that his is only a decorative mask. But more than the mask, what can the spiders do? Well, in toy form, it's advertised that they can attach like masks onto the faces of protectors and Toa masters. Where have we seen this before? I know, the Karana from Generation 1. The Borak and Borak Call, as toys and in story, were able to launch Karana onto the faces of Toa and villagers of Mana Nui, and over time control their bodies and make them obey the Karana creatures. So who's to say the same isn't happening to the residents of Okoto when they encounter Skull Spiders, thus giving them a reason to fear the Horde? On the same note, you know which other LEGO theme had a device to manipulate a population into obedience? Well, Alpha Team, in which the protagonist, Ogle, created evil orbs to turn ordinary minifigures into mindless zombies to carry out his world domination plans. There's also Hero Factory, lest we forget, which had brain creatures that not only controlled, but transformed natural animals into warriors. So as you can tell, LEGO is no stranger to its villains creating armies out of possessed citizens. Would it be too far to fetch to say that the Skull Spiders, when exposed long enough to Akoshans, can transform them into Skull Spiders? Also similar to the Borag and Borag Kal is how the Horde is controlled, a specialized Krana known as the Za for commanding and Za for telepathy. Therefore, we can see how the Golden Skull Spider Mask can control the Skull Spiders at large through telepathy. Oh, and by the way, how did Loth obtain the mask? Well, the best assumption is that it was discovered sometime after the fight between Akimu and Makuta. According to Biosector.com, Akimu knocks the mask from Makuta's face, and a shockwave sends both brothers into an endless sleep and scatters the masks of power across Okoto. Since we counted the Skull Spider Mask among those with power, we can see that more than just the main three are scattered across Okoto. Maybe that Mask of Time that is alluded to so often in the series is out there somewhere as well. So now that I've tackled this from all angles, from the Mask and its powers, to the Skull Spiders, to Loss itself, let's weave a story to tie in with G2.
Loss was a natural spider living on the island of Okoto, which inhabited other biomechanical wildlife, when one day after Akimu and Makuta's fight, encountered the golden mask of skull spiders. Seeing it couldn't wear the mask, it soon learned of its power of creating skull spiders in the likeness of the mask itself. When Loss encountered an Akoshan villager, he tackled the villager and put the mask on its face, transforming the villager itself into a skull spider. As Loss met more villagers, he used the skull spider, as well as the mask, to forge an army, weakening each village of the island into a handful of residents. The Okoto tribes hid in sanctuary from the skull spiders outside of the ancient city, with no antidote to reverse the effects from the victims of the mask. In a last-ditch effort, they called upon the Toa Masters to seek Akimu and harness the powers that can overcome the spider army, and hopefully return the villagers back into the normal state. So I'm not the greatest storyteller, but this is enough to fit in line with the events taking place in J2, and as best as I know personally. As a result, we have a villain with more fleshed out skill set and intimidation to the residents of Okoto other than being a creepy crawly. Now please keep in mind that I am basing my information of G2 on the animations and story for the LEGO website, without using the Netflix series or the books from Scholastic as sources. Let me know if this is contradiction in those and other materials about Bionicle in the comments below. I don't mind being wrong, especially if there's more story officially out there that I haven't discovered yet. Hey everybody, thanks again so much for watching this video. I had a fun time making this theory as well as editing the video itself. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments or give me a like. Um, if you want to check out more videos, we have a couple more videos on the channel and there are more coming up real soon, so be sure to subscribe. Our next video is actually going to cover Robo Riders in much a similar vein about an unknown bad guy, which I think will be a lot of fun to share with you. Now, I wanted to also address that we now have a new forum, a free to sign up forum, um, if you wanted to be more part of the Brick Theorists, if you wanted to help with some of the research visuals, we will give you credit in the videos if you want to supply some information or even help with collaborating with other people in order to create videos like we do here. This is all done as a volunteer service and I want to try to integrate as many LEGO fans as possible to get the ideas going. So you can sign up for that in the link in the description below and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time with more videos. If you would like more information about the Brick Theorists, you can check out the top link in the description below. And if you would like to engage in more about the Brick Theorists, you can find me on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.